Hello everyone and welcome back to Strike Zone with manager George Samus. Strike Zone is a weekly program that gives you, the fans, the opportunity to ask the St. Saint Paul Saints skipper questions and to hear his great insights about baseball, sports in general, or just about life. My apologies for not having the program on a little earlier this week, but a little family emergency has me behind schedule. So let's get right to Strike Zone. So we welcome back manager George Samus. Uh, George, we thank you for taking the time with us here today. So let's first of all get into um, updates and acquisitions that you have related to the team. So Sam Moss is still on the DL. What is his status at the moment? Yes, yeah, Sam Moss is he's still on the inactive list. And um, <clears throat> I'm, not sure if, I'm not sure if he'll be back by the end of the month. I know he's traveled with the team, and he hasn't swung a bat yet. So really not sure how that's going to play out. And I mean, we're shooting for the end of the month, but, but not really sure yet. I don't think we've had other injuries or acquisitions of late. Uh, is that correct? Yeah, and I mean, Steve Nickerak's the only other guy, and he he was not on the road trip with us. Um, this past road trip, he did not come. But I just got a text from him this morning because we, we do have an off day today, and we are going to Sioux Falls tomorrow morning, and he wants to travel with us, and so he is feeling better. So, so I think there is a shot that he will be back by the end of the month, which is good news. Did he not play a couple nights ago? No, you know, they made a mistake in the box score. That was not him. That was Willie Argo. Whoever did the stats for them made a mistake. That was not him. He's not He's not eligible to come off until the end of the month anyway. So somebody made a mistake. Gotcha. That was a little confusing on the box score then. Okay. Uh, so yeah. let's let's get into our questions for this week. So we're right at the halfway point, 38 and 12 for your team so far. And what's your assessment halfway through the season? I'll tell you what, these guys are doing an outstanding job. Um, they come to play every day, and to be 38 and 12 uh, at the halfway mark is that's an unbelievable job they're doing. And to come, you know, it's pretty it's pretty tough to. We didn't lose one series the whole first half, and we were maybe one hit away from winning every series in the first half, and that's just an unbelievable job these guys have been doing. Is there a point that you say to yourself, I, I know everybody looked at that 73-win season of Wichita last season and said that'll never be duplicated or, or passed, but you guys are actually on a pace to beat that. Does, it, does that even cross your mind, or you just kind of put that aside? Absolutely not. We we don't think about that. We just go out and try to win every game, and um, you know, you win sixty games, you win seventy games, whatever it is. That's you know, we're not talking about any records. Uh, we just want to go out and just win as many games as we can and get into the playoffs. With a sixteen game lead over the next closest team in your division, is it hard to keep your team focused on the task ahead, knowing they have such a big lead? Not really. These guys want to go out there, and they have the right attitude. They go out there, and they play hard every game, and they want to win every game, and, and that's what we do. I know in talking with Willie Argo a couple of weeks ago, one of the things he said to me was, you you guys were like 13 or 14 and 1, right, to start out, and, and still have gone 22 and 11 from that point on. But he sounded almost kind of disappointed that that wasn't at the same pace. And so I'm gathering that the team really has an objective that we're going out there to win every game. You know, that's a good way to put it. You know, what you said, the 22 and 11, and they're disappointed. Well, that's what it is. You know, when we, we lost a couple of tough games and went up a couple of one-run games that maybe we let slip away, and you know, guys are disappointed, and that's the right attitude to have. I'm not a fan of happy losers. I'm really not a fan of that. And, you know, I've been doing this for a long time, and I've seen too many happy losers out there, and I'm not a fan of it, and we really don't have any happy losers on our team, and that's the way it should be. Is it totally amazing to you at this point that you've played 15 series this season and haven't lost any of them? Yeah, it's it's truly amazing. Um, you just can't believe it. You know, it's again, it goes back to these guys who just come to play every day and they have the right attitude and and they've been getting the job done. Michelle from St. Paul would like to know: Angelo Sanco is so fiery on the field, and she wanted to know is that the way he is all the time? Absolutely not. He's one of the nicest guys in the world. Um, what a great kid he is. And um, But you love the way he is on the field. He plays hard, and he's he's emotional out there. He plays with a lot of energy, and, and I, I like the way he is on the field. Um, but once that game's over, 
he is one of the nicest, quietest guys you'll see, and it's I really love having him on our team. Uh, Henry from Chaska would like to know, it, there was a spot on the schedule that had an all-star game listed for the American Association, but he didn't see that that was set, so where is that being played? Yeah, I guess originally there was an all-star game scheduled in Laredo, but I guess it's not going to happen. So there is no all-star game this year, and, um, you know, it's – so we'll, we'll enjoy the two days off because, you know, when you um, when you don't get many off days, it's when you do get them, it's nice to enjoy them, and it, it'll be nice to have that little two-day break. I'm understanding that next year's game is supposed to be in St. Paul. Is that correct? I don't know the answer to that. I I don't know. I've you hear rumors, but that doesn't mean anything. So I've heard nothing about that. Okay. Sal from Brain, Blaine, I'm sorry, would like to know if you're a big fan of the Home Run Derby. I think the Home Run Derby is um, neat. I think it's a neat thing to have, and um, but you know, and I never get to see it because we're always playing. So I guess it was a good show last night, and um, but we didn't get to see it because we were playing. So. But I think the home run derby is a neat thing, and and I I think it's great that they do it every year. Mary from Minneapolis would like to know: she sees players go to the bench and smash coolers and throw stuff around. Is this extreme competitiveness to you or childishness? Extreme childishness, and it's silly, and it's it's. I think it's a terrible thing, and I don't like our players doing anything like that and, and I know it's an emotional game and I know guys get mad and but doing that stuff is just what's the point it just makes you look like a fool and it's probably best not to do it if you're going to get mad maybe you should just go underneath and go inside and where nobody can see you And but that doesn't mean I want you to go smash stuff in there it just, it's a tough emotional sport and but you got to control your emotions I want to jump to Mary's other question that she asked, and she asked if you've ever had to go to a player and kind of say, okay, enough is enough here. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Cause sometimes, it's funny, we had a meeting the other day that, you know, guys are, especially the guys that over 300, they've been getting a little, you know, I don't want to use the word childish, but, you know, they have been coming back to the dugout and need to control their emotions a little bit better, and I let them know, and just tough to watch a guy hitting over 300, over 350, you know, acting that way. And we had a meeting about it, and we told him, and I think we're good now. Excellent. James from Bloomington would like to know, are there goals that you set for your players for the season? Um, not really. We just, I just tell them the first day. I want them to show up on time, play hard, and our goal is to win a championship and come out to play, play to win every game. And the games in May and the games in June are just as important as the games in August and, and September, and they need to understand that because every game counts. And But personal goals, not really. It's winning games is what it's about. Mike from Eden Prairie would like to know if you allow people to contact the team still about wanting to play for the Saints as the season is going along. Yeah, we get emails all the time and phone calls all the time, and there's times if we have a need, maybe we'll bring, bring a guy in and take a look at him. But, um, but again, as of right now, you know we've been doing we've been doing okay and um, it's but if we have a need though this time this time like with Robert Youngdahl that's a perfect example we had some injuries and he just happened to send an email in at the time and um, and the timing was right and we had a need and we brought him in and um, so sometimes it works out and sometimes we just don't it's just not the right fit at the time. Just to make sure you don't get inundated with emails, is there a proper way that a person should go about that if they're interested? Yeah, they should just contact the Saints office, send an, send an email to the Saints office, and it'll get to me. Okay. Just wanted to make sure you didn't have a thousand emails. They have to understand, though. Yeah, well, we get them anyways. They have to understand, though. It's, it's, um, we do get a bunch anyways, and it's not like we, you know, if we don't get back to all of them, it's, it's tough to do. And so we do get a lot of them, and, and a lot of them are maybe too young to play in this league. I think a lot of them are just guys that, you know, barely out of college and maybe played at a you know, Division three school or lower and it just, sometimes it's just maybe not the right fit. Um, it's tough to go from you know, those, those younger guys out, out of college just to come up and play against double A, triple A players. That's a pretty big jump. I think it seems to me too that some people have a misunderstanding about the level of play of independent baseball. They don't really get that it is double or triple A level. 
And they just, you're exactly right. They don't. They just think, okay, I'm going to go play for the Saints. It's an easy thing. Well, it's not. You know, there are, like I said, many double A, triple A players and many players that have played with us that have moved on to the big leagues. And it's just, it's a lot better than people think it is. And um, especially the hitters. The hitters are, um, there's, there's some real solid hitters. And you may, you may not see too many pitchers sold over 90 miles per hour, but the ones that don't, they know what they're doing. And they change speeds and, um, you know, hit their spots. And it's a lot tougher than people think it is. Just to give a little reference for fans this year, too, there's there's a couple guys that I know personally that had gone to play in the Mexican leagues this year that um, they consider to be triple A level that are completely blowing away hitters there, but were struggling in the American Association. So the level of play is really, really a challenge out there. Yeah, you know, it, it's, it is good. It's, it's, it's good in our league, good in Mexico. It's, they're just good players. Tammy from Hudson would like to know what you talk about when you come to home plate before games. You know what, the first day we, when we're out there, we cover the ground rules, you know, of you know, each, each park is different, the ground rules. So you go over the ground rules and say what's in play and what's not and the home runs and, you know, cause each park is different. Um, so the first day it is a legit, um, it's a meaningful conversation. The rest of the days of the series, it's not. It's just up there, you hand the lineup around, you listen to some silly stories, some silly jokes, and then you go back to the dugout. So first day matters. The other day is, is really talking about nothing. Do you always come out and give up your lineup card, or you send? Um, most of the time, but once in a while you send a coach out there, and it's just once in a while you like to just shake it up a little bit, change it up, and um, stuff. But most of the time I do go out there. Mike from Albert Lee would like to know if there's a pitcher that you watched today that you really like. You know what? Clayton Kershaw is obviously everybody's, you know, everybody can watch him pitch and he has something else with the stuff he throws with that mid 90s fastball and that good breaking ball and competitor and, and he's left handed. So that's a guy I would say that it's, he, he's, he's exciting to watch. Before we get to our last question, I just wanted to mention for people out there that while George is a, a particularly magnanimous and wonderful person, he is not going to give you his bank account for you to transfer money from Nigeria in. So uh, just as a reference for you guys out there. <laughs> so the last question we have is, uh, who would you, who do you think is going to win tonight's All-Star game? You know what? I honestly don't know, but Brian Dillard is in the game, right? I don't think he got voted in. Didn't he? Or did he get added in later on? I thought he got selected. Yeah, I think Jose Batista. I think he got in. I think Batista. Um, I think he. Um, think he's resting or something. He had an injury, his shoulder sore. So I think Batista. Um, so I think Dozier's in. So you know what? If he made it, which is very well deserved. I want them to win, and I hope he can come in and get a big hit and help win that game for him. American League all the way. George is telling us. That's it. Well, you know what? And it's, I know we talked about this before about the home field advantage. I think it's silly. That's the size of home field advantage for the World Series. But, um, but you know what? I'm pulling for the Twins. I'm pulling for Brian Dozier so, and Glenn Perkins. So let's let's go with them. What What do you think are the Twins' prospects for after the All-Star break here? You know, they, they've, been, they've been playing better lately, huh? They've been playing pretty good. And, and again, I, I don't see many of the games, but I just look at the box scores and watch the highlights at night. And they're playing better, and I hope they can keep it going. They look good. Well, thank you, George, again for your time this week. We want to thank manager George Samus for joining us on Strike Zone this week. If you have your own questions you'd like to ask the St. Paul St. Skipper, please send them to us at askgeorge at minorleaguesportsreport.com. That's askgeorge at minorleaguesportsreport.com, and please have them in by Friday at noon. We thank you for joining us this week. I am Rob Panier, the managing editor of the Minor League Sports Report, and we look forward to seeing you next week on Strike Zone.